To get the most out of this lesson, students will need the guided video notes. You can download these and all the extension activities using the link in the description. The oldest stories ever told are written in the stars. We have the stars. The star and all the planets. The stars. Our sun and planets were formed from swirling clouds of star stuff. Throughout human history, we have been fascinated by what exists beyond our planet, in outer space. We are mesmerized by our moon, the sun, the planets, and the vast number of stars that fill our night sky. While there is a lot we don't know about the universe, there are also many things that we have discovered over time. Our home, planet Earth, revolves around a medium-sized star. We simply call this star the Sun. It takes the Earth one year, or 365 days, to orbit all the way around the Sun. While our star is very special to us, it is just one of the billions of stars in our galaxy. These stars come in many different sizes. Some stars are smaller, and some are much larger. Our sun is in between. It is a medium-sized star. So if there are bigger stars out there, why is the sun so much brighter? Well, to answer that question, let's imagine a flashlight versus a lighthouse. Obviously, the lighthouse has a larger, more powerful light than the flashlight does, but in this case, it's all about distance. If the flashlight was much closer to us, it would appear much brighter than the lighthouse. The same idea applies to stars. The closer a star is to us, the brighter it appears. On your guided notes, put the stars in order from the brightest to the dimmest based on how far away from the Earth they are. Good luck! Y is the closest star, so it is the brightest. The next closest is star W. Then there is X and Z. Humans have always liked to look for patterns and images in the stars. These groups of stars are called constellations. As we said before, it takes one year for the Earth to revolve around the Sun. This means that at different times of the year, the Earth is in a different place. When the Earth is in this location, we can't see any of the stars over here. And when the Earth is in this location, we can't see any of the stars over here. That's because the Sun is so bright it stops us from being able to see any other stars that are on the other side of it. Because of this, we can only see certain constellations during certain times of the year. On your guided notes, try to correctly identify which constellations the Sun will be blocking during different months of the year. Good luck! In June, the Capricorn constellation will be blocked. In August, you may not be able to see Aries or Taurus. And then in October, the Sun will be blocking the Gemini constellation. Finally, let's zoom back in and focus on the Earth. 
as we discussed, the Earth revolves around the Sun. But while it revolves, the Earth also rotates, or spins, around its axis. We can think of the axis as an imaginary line that goes from the North Pole through the Earth all the way down through the South Pole. It takes the Earth one day, or 24 hours, to make a complete rotation. And you may have noticed something interesting about the Earth. It has something in common with this stop sign, and this tree, and this tower. It's tilted. This tilt is extremely important because it's actually what causes the different seasons. Let's look at the Earth during a few different times of the year to see how this works. First, let's check out the Earth during the month of June. At this point in its orbit, we can see that the top half of the Earth is tilted towards the Sun. We call the top half of the Earth the Northern Hemisphere. At this time, it is summer for people living in the Northern Hemisphere. And people living here experience warmer temperatures. For people living in the Southern Hemisphere, it is the opposite. At this time, the Southern Hemisphere is tilted away from the Sun. They experience winter at this time, which brings colder temperatures. Next, let's take a look at the Earth in the month of December. At this point in its orbit, the Earth is now on the opposite side of the Sun. You can see that the Northern Hemisphere is now tilted away from the Sun. Because it is tilted away, it is now winter in the Northern Hemisphere. This brings colder temperatures to the northern half of the world. And as you might guess, the southern hemisphere experiences the opposite temperatures at this time because now it is tilted towards the sun. This is the time of year when they get to enjoy their summer. As you can see, this tilt has a huge impact on Earth's temperatures. On your guided notes, answer the remaining questions by using the diagram of the Earth orbiting around the sun. Good luck! Here are the correct answers. Thank you for your effort today. With your new skills, you're now ready to move on to the challenge page. Or maybe you'd like to chat about some questions using the discussion slides. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.